I'm hoping we can hear the music back here. But we got us a 71. I believe it's a 71. I'll check on it when I get home. Uh, this is a Stingray. And this is a four-speed, factory four-speed car. So I'm going to show you that in a second. This is one of those things. We got us a luggage rack. Either you love it or you hate it. But it sure is chrome. And this car is in beautiful shape. We got us our factory rally wheels. I doubt it's original paint. Let's take a look at that four-speed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we got us a factory four-speed here with the right amount of pedals. Let's... Let's get those pedals. This is one sweet ride, inside and out. Looks like we got us a small block in here. We'll get a shot of that in a second. Got to show the Stingray emblem. There's another shot of those BF Goodrich radial TAs with rally wheels. Yeah, this is definitely a 350. But it doesn't mean I like it any less. 4 speed 350, 70, 71. Good horsepower back then. Looks like we might have upgraded the master cylinder. Can't blame him for wanting to stop. Let's get a good shot. Yeah, there we go. There we go. This is the money shot right here. No music. We got us a video for the video channel. Check me out. 1970, 71 Corvette. Stingray. Factory 4 speed. How you like me now? I hope that you do like me and you can give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. So we might have to go back to the uh, original snapshot videos, especially at this car show, because we had a lot of cool cars and a lot of music. But thanks for watching. Hello everybody. Wanted to jump into the video and uh, square up some facts about the Corvette. So I wasn't sure if it was a 71 or a 70 and you know it makes a big difference to, because of the emission standards that started to come into play. Um, but this is for sure a 1971 the way I understand it so I know that there's a lot of Corvette fans out there and if I'm wrong please let me know but I believe it's this egg crate grill this chrome egg crate grill and the squared off turn signals that are the major telltale signs that this is a 71 uh, stingray not to take away from this car because after checking into it, I think it's a whole lot cooler than that, than I did when I first saw it at the show. So <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to point out in the interior was that this one had the 160 mile per hour speedometer. I guess they all did that year. And that's pretty cool. I'm, I have a feeling that this car flat out could probably approach that speed. But if you consider that just in a few years, a speedometer in a Chevy product would say 85 miles per hour, right? So looking down and seeing that the possibilities of a 160 miles per hour, well, that, that's a lot of fun to have in your car. And, you know, the, the red line was at about 5,000 RPMs on that year 350 engine. One of the things that I wish I got a close-up of, and I had forgotten all about it when I was at the show, is that these Corvette... Um, tags on the console provide a lot of information, uh, including the horsepower, the cubic inch displace, uh, displacement, and the compression ratio of the engine. So that would have been a telltale sign also about what year it was. Unfortunately, I, it, it's too blurred. I, I can't see it even when I zoom in. But I really did um, like the originality of this car. And it was uh, super clean. I, again, I don't think that it was the original paint on the car. Uh, but then the last thing I wanted to talk about was the 350 engine in these Stingrays. Because, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people would, oh, I wish it had a 454. Or, you know, a 350 is just, a, you know, you see these engines every day. But I wanted to hit you with some facts about the, uh, the 350 that came in the Corvette. And, and I'm getting this from the Google, 
Um, it's from an auto museum. And it says that introduced in 1970, the 350 cubic inch LT1 engine variant offered a whopping 350 horsepower. So if you think about it, that is one horsepower per cubic inch. And <clears throat> uh, of course, this is long before the days of turbos. And to get a naturally aspirated V8 engine to put out one horsepower per cubic inch is definitely... Um, <clears throat> an amazing accomplishment. But by 1971, the emission regulations kicked in and they dropped the horsepower to 330 horsepower on the 350 V8. But it also says that the lightweight aerodynamic fiberglass body of the Corvette allowed this 350 to shine with power to spare. So even though it was a 350 and it was not the 350 horse, it's still a pretty cool vehicle to see at the car show. So let me get out of this information and let's move on to the Camaro. <clears throat> of course, I'm having problems with my throat, you know, every time you hit the record button. So just bear with me. Um, I had a friend, his name is Bob, and I'm hoping that he'll come and comment uh, on this video. But he had, I believe it was an RSSS. 1969 Camaro in this same color blue and it had the hideaway headlights and this is just a really special car to me because of the memories but it also this this one I have better pictures of it so let me move on yeah this was also it was a really sunny day so I didn't here we go this is a good picture of this car this color blue I just love this color blue and it just brings back such good memories now I'm not into these stripes because my friend Bob's car had no um, stripes or any kind of graphics on it, and it was just plain, and it, and it looked amazing. His interior was black, and this, this one is white, and I really like the white interior. Uh, but this, this car had a 427 in it. So we'll get into the details about this engine, because I don't think that this was factory installed, and uh, I don't think that you know, this is the original engine in the car. Here's a little better uh, close-up of the vehicle. I should have asked the people that were sitting with the car. They, they were probably uh, would have answered any questions I had, but I was just more focused on the vehicle. And I did get some interior shots, and I thought this was interesting. First of all, I always loved this shifter in the 69 Camaro. It was like a giant circuit breaker, like you were going to turn on and off the power of a power plant with this giant circuit breaker shifter. Um, and this car had the factory installed console gauges, which is just really cool. It, they're chrome gauges. They did a really nice job. You know, these, these consoles were just, you know, plastic pieces of junk with some wood grain uh, stickers on it. But these gauges, they had the charging system, uh, the fuel, and then they had the engine temperature and the oil pressure. And you could keep your eye on the road and just look down with your eyes and you could see how all the important systems were doing on your car. So I thought it was really cool to see those uh, factory installed uh, gauges in the console. And I really liked, of course, this interior was spotless. You can pretty much eat off of it except for a little mark on that uh, door panel, which is where you would rest your arm. Uh, but this, the white interior is really uh, a clean look with that color blue. Here's another shot of the, the blue paint, and it just had a glow to it the way that the sun was hitting it. So now let's talk about the engine that came in this, that was in this car. And I'll hit you with some more facts, because if this was a factory installed 427, then of course it would be something really special. Um, and let's see what they say on the Google about it. And, you know, the SS350 package offered a 350 V8 engine with 300 horsepower. That was the standard uh, V8 engine. You could get a 396 that was 325 horsepower. But imagine this. The, you only get 25 more horsepower and you get a whole lot more weight. So that the 350 was a better, the 300 horsepower 350 was a better balanced car and probably just as fast as the 396 because you think about the power to weight ratio. Now, 
in 69, you could get a 427, but you had to use the Copo system. So um, let me, again, let me look up the official definition of Copo because I, I, I should remember this, right? But when you're old, you start to forget stuff. So Copo stands for Central Office Production Order. And this was to provide your Camaro with superpower. And this gave the Camaro 425 horsepower with a 427 cubic inch motor. And the Copo designation was a limited run. And in 1969, there was only a thousand cars delivered with a factory installed 427. So I highly doubt that this car that showed up in a Southwest Florida car show, you know, was actually a factory installed 427. Does that mean I didn't like the car? Absolutely not. I thought this was a really cool car and it brought back such great memories and it's this shot here that i think it's the nicest looking camaro right here with the hideaway headlights and the ss emblems and uh this one has a splitter on the bottom now i'm not sure if that would be a factory install and i uh, didn't get a good look at the fog lights um you know but this was a really sharp looking car and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I, again, I could use a thumbs up and I appreciate your support. And, you know, please hit that notification bell so you'll be able to see the next video. Thank you very much.